Hello, I'm Leonora, and I'm back! I'm home! I'm back from Spain, which makes me sad and happy at the same time. And I also just got my hair cut yesterday. If you're watching this, what do you think? Um, I just finished reading Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare, continuing my guilty pleasure enjoyment of this series. It's just so much fun, and Clockwork Angel, I think, is my favorite Cassandra Clare book so far. Um, like all Cassandra Clare books, it's just compulsively readable. You start it, and I can be a bit of a literary snob. It's not my fault. I start it, and I'm there like, I really shouldn't be reading it, but I can't put it down. Because, you know, Cassandra Clare just keeps you turning the pages, and you need to know what happens next. And Tessa is so much cooler than Clary. Like, Clary's okay. I tolerated Clary. Mostly for Jace's one-liners. But I really, really liked Tessa. She just sort of, like, took a lot more action than Clary. Clary had a lot of sort of moments where she'd just sort of be there, like, I'll just sort of stand there and do nothing. Whereas Tessa, whenever something was going down, you know, she found some way to contribute. Like, there's one part where she's literally... There are a bunch of vampires, and she's there like, I don't have a weapon, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn this chair into a weapon, like, full on, come at me, vampires. I'm ready for you. I have a chair. Um, I love the Victorian setting. I, I, there's a character in it you've probably heard of. His name's Will Herondale, and he's my new guilty pleasure. He's my new guilty pleasure book boyfriend. I still might like Jace better, because Jace is funnier one-liners, but I really do like Will. Um, just fun note, I ended up listening, sorry, I was listening, meant to say I was reading this while I was listening to The Planet by Gustav Holst, and it worked really well. I just started reading at a certain point, and the music followed all the sort of, like, right moments in the book, and that's completely random, but... Once you get to the climax of this book, if you want to heighten your reading experience, I suggest putting on the planets. It'll start off with Mars. It's just got this really cool music for the climax that just flows straight into the rest of the story. Oh my god, it was so good. Anyway, going on to talk about spoilers. So if you haven't read the book, first of all, it, why haven't you read this book? It's like, if you're not going to read this book, you're not going to read this book, so why are you watching this video? I mean, if you haven't read this book, like, how can you not? This, this book has been out forever. Or at least in my head it has. Um, so, I loved, um, there's a chapter called Bodicea, is that how you say her name? I don't know how to say the character's name, where Tessa just sort of realizes, you know, she's there like, I can't fight you, but I can kill myself. If you want me to kill myself, I'm gonna kill myself. And I loved that moment. There are a lot of times in books their characters, usually female characters, are there like, I'm going to sacrifice myself, and it just feels really stupid, but with Tessa it felt smart, and I'm not sure if that's just because I really like Tessa, or what, and then with, I loved the moment when Will finds her, and I'm just there, like, like, what is up with Will's angst? I mean, I'm pretty sure in the next book, which I'm going to start reading as soon as I finish this video, there will be some explanation for the angst, but sometimes, like, can we chill with the angst in YA book characters? That would be nice. I would appreciate sort of like a toning down of angst. You can still have a really attractive male character who isn't angsty. Steve Yancey from The Raven Boys. He isn't angsty. He's like a complete and total nerd. And he's still really attractive. So, Will, Will, take some non-angst lessons. But if you don't, I'll, I'll still love you anyway. So, so not my fault. Um, I really didn't like Jessamine. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one out there. I don't see where her redeeming qualities are. It's like, she, she slices somebody with a parasol, like, twice. And then she spends the rest of the time running away from stuff and being there, like, what, I can't, I can't be a shadow hunter because I'm a lady, you know, I'm just supposed to wear nice dresses and have a parasol. Oh, I love the parasol until I found out it could kill monsters, too, but no, no, if you got a parasol that can kill monsters, you rock that fashionable monster killer. Ah, Jessamy, and then the way that she just left Thomas there, like, that was such a dick move, Jessamy. 
Come on. Um, the plot twist at the end, I did not see that coming. I mean, I, I sort of didn't like Nate at the beginning. He seemed like sort of a douche. But then at the end, I'm just still like, I mean, I've got a younger sibling. If somebody told me that, oh yeah, by the way, your younger sibling's not human, and, you know, we want, we'll give you money if you, we help us, yeah, betrayal and stuff, I'd be there like, no, I don't care if my younger sibling's not human. That is, that's my brother. Fight me. But, God, ah, oh, Nate, Nate, please tell me, did Nate die? He didn't die, right? I really want him to die. Because that's how I deal with people that I don't like. Um, I love just the image of clockwork stuff. And I love the ending with the, like, little angel returning to her. And once again, I'm not sure if that was because of the music. There's this one part of Jupiter from the planet that was just playing. And it was just like, the music was swelling and it worked so well. But maybe it doesn't have to do with that. Either way, I really like the ending. I love the setting. I love the idea of clockwork stuff. Although my dad, when he first saw it, thought that I was reading a clockwork orange, which I'm not, because I like me more happy stuff. Like, you know, things where everybody dies. A lot of people died in this book. That really surprised me. You had the cook who died, and Thomas who died, and both of those, to me, it just sort of seems like Cassandra Clare is sort of like, stepping up her game as a writer, you know, some people might be there like, oh my god, he's killing more people, that's not so good, but I feel like it did help the story, because people die more, and one of my problems with the sort of, like, original, um, Mortal Instruments trilogy was nobody really died, it's like, they're, when, to convince people that the stakes are high, you need to show that the stakes are high, show, not tell, and I didn't get that in the Mortal Instruments, in the first three books of the Mortal Instruments, but I really did get that in A Clockwork Angel. I know that the stakes are high, because we've seen people die. I was really sad about Thomas dying, you know, you sort of get his unrequited love towards Sophie, and he just seems like an all-around good guy, so when he died, and especially because it was Jessamine's goddamn fault, and they already didn't really like Jessamine, just Thomas should have survived, and Jessamine should have died. That's all I'm saying. Maybe Jessamine will redeem herself in the next two books, but I doubt it. Anyway, so if you're thinking about whether or not to read Clockwork Angel, this makes no sense because I just said I'll explain it, but still, Clockwork Angel was so much fun, it felt a little slow towards the beginning, but it really got going, and once it got going, I just couldn't put it down. I liked the ending, I'm really excited to see where Cassandra Clare goes from here as a writer, because I really do feel like she's grown as a writer in The Infernal Devices compared to the first two books of Mortal Instruments. So I'm just going to finish this video and pick up my next Cassandra Clare book. See you all then.